Hi everyone, let me introduce to you my friend Harry, who is a speech robot. He will take us through the case study of Amazon today. I will also be asking some questions to him then and there during this video in order to make this video like an interactive session and also an interesting one for you. Harry, now it's over to you. Hi everyone, I am Harry. Today, let's see the case study of Amazon about withdrawing its algorithm because of gender bias against women in recruiting. Let's also see what Amazon failed to do and how a Dutch startup solved the issue. This video also explains how human bias works. Before exploring this case study, I would request you to subscribe, 5 minutes learning channel in YouTube and support me to post more such videos. Also by subscribing, you can keep track of my video updates. For your better understanding, I have enabled this video with English subtitles, now let's begin the case study, from a small case study interview about this Amazon issue. Amazon software engineers recently uncovered a big problem. Their new online recruiting tool did not like women. The glitch, sources told Reuters, stemmed from the fact that Amazon's computer models were trained by observing patterns in resumes of job candidates over a 10-year period, largely from men, in effect teaching themselves that male candidates were preferable. Reuters correspondent Jeffrey Dastin. The technology thought, oh, Amazon doesn't like any resume that has the word women's in it. Women's, you know, captain of a women's chess club, captain of a women's soccer team, and all, some all-women's women's university. Because the company has hired so many male engineers or, or software developers, data scientists, and so forth, that clearly the unsuccessful candidates are, are the ones who also would have this, this word women's in it. Amazon never solely relied on these online recruiting tools and disbanded the unit that created it by the start of last year, sources said. It now uses a much watered down version for administrative chores. The company declined to comment. Dastin explaining that artificial intelligence is only as smart as the information it's fed. What people say in the industry is garbage in, garbage out. So if you give it bad data or that reflects some bias or whatever, the computer is just going to mimic that. A growing number of companies are automating recruitment, hoping this will make hiring faster and more uniform. Hilton and Unilever are among those using software made by HireVue, which lets applicants video record answers to employers' questions. Thank you so much. HireVue CEO says his firm analyzes candidates' speech and facial expressions in order to reduce reliance on resumes. Amazon, a source said, has a new team assembled to give online screening another try, this time with a focus on diversity. That's a good start, Harry. I'm still wondering how a big company like Amazon could even fail. Harry, can you please explain us how it all started? Sure. Amazon had been building computer programs since 2014 to review job applicants' resumes with the aim of standardizing the search for top talent. Automation has been key to Amazon's e-commerce dominance, whether it is inside warehouses or driving pricing decisions. The company's experimental hiring tool used artificial intelligence to give job candidates scores ranging from 1 to 5 stars, much like shoppers rate products on Amazon. They literally wanted the AI tool to be an engine, for example, if they are going to give 100 resumes to it, it will spit out the top 5, and they will hire those top 5. But, by 2015, Amazon realized its new system was not rating candidates for software developer jobs and other technical posts in a gender-neutral way. Harry, can you explain in detail the reasons for bias while using the algorithms? AI algorithms are trained to observe patterns in large data sets to help predict outcomes. In Amazon's case, its algorithm used all resumes submitted to the company over a 10-year period to learn how to spot the best candidates. Given the low proportion of women working in the company, 
as in most technology companies, the algorithm quickly spotted male dominance and thought it was a factor in success. Because the algorithm used the results of its own predictions to improve its accuracy, it got stuck in a pattern of sexism against female candidates. And since the data used to train it, was at some point created by humans, it means that the algorithm also inherited undesirable human traits, like bias and discrimination, which have also been a problem in recruitment for years. It's an outcome of GIGO process, garbage in, garbage out, which means that bad input will result in bad output. And it's the same with bias. The problem is that it's incredibly difficult to filter out algorithmic bias because the algorithms we build pick up on human prejudices. Let me show you another video which explains the machine learning and human bias. In learning, computers learn the solution by finding patterns in data. So it's easy to think there's no human bias in that. But just because something is based on data doesn't automatically make it neutral. Even with good intentions, it's impossible to separate ourselves from our own human biases. So, our human biases become part of the technology we create, in many different ways. There's interaction bias. Like this recent game, where people were asked to draw shoes for the computer. Most people drew ones like this. So, as more people interacted with the game, the computer didn't even recognize these. Latent bias. For example, if you were training a computer on what a physicist looks like, and you're using pictures of past physicists, your algorithm will end up with a latent bias, skewing towards men. And selection bias. Say you're training a model to recognize faces. Whether you grab images from the internet or your own photo library, are you making sure to select photos that represent everyone? Since some of our most advanced products use machine learning, we've been working to prevent that technology from perpetuating negative human bias. From tackling offensive or clearly misleading information from appearing at the top of your search results page, to adding a feedback tool on the search bar so people can flag hateful or inappropriate autocomplete suggestions. It's a complex issue and there's no magic bullet, but it starts with all of us being aware of it so we can all be part of the conversation. Because technology should work for everyone. So now, there will be question of trust, whether or not to rely on AI. To fully benefit from using AI, it's important to investigate what would happen if we allowed AI to make decisions without human intervention. Many of us already rely on algorithms for many of our daily decisions, from what to watch on Netflix or buy from Amazon. But, research shows, people lose confidence in algorithms, faster than humans, when they see them make a mistake, even when the algorithm performs better overall. For example, if your GPS suggests you, use an alternative route to avoid traffic, that ends up taking longer than predicted, you are likely to stop relying on your GPS in the future. But, if taking the alternate route was your decision, it is unlikely you will stop trusting your own judgment. A follow-up study, on overcoming algorithm aversion showed that, people were more likely to use an algorithm, and accept its errors, if given the opportunity to modify the algorithm themselves, even if it meant making it perform imperfectly. So Harry? Is there any solution for this issue? A Dutch startup company solved this issue. Instead of using AI on psychometric tests or resumes, the company looks at a person's natural language, your subconscious use of words, sentence structure, and stylometry. These are predictive of behavior and personality traits. Algorithms compare your answers to a data set of more than 6 million answers plus related information, about post-hiring performances in specific jobs. They consistently see that the recommendations are gender and background neutral. This is because female and male extroverts, show large similarities in their stylometry, compared to a group of introverts. 
The same holds true for age or background. By continuously feeding the algorithms, with answers and information about how people are doing in a job or company, the learning becomes more precise and better over time. In that sense, we can completely solve the lack of diversity in leadership positions and make it about what really should matter, selecting talent that strives in her, his job. Thank you all for watching this video. If you have not subscribed yet, please support me by subscribing 5 Minutes Learning Channel in YouTube to keep in track of my new video updates. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, friends, for watching this video. Signing off now. We'll see you soon in another case study with Harry.